Hello and welcome to my video all about how to make your own curtains. The type of curtain I'm going to show you how to make is the type that hangs from curtain rings. Even if you haven't been sewing long, making curtains is actually quite a simple process. It's just the amount of fabric you have to deal with that's really the issue and what people find difficult. To make these curtains, you will need some curtain fabric, this fabric will form the front of your curtains, so you can have it patterned or plain or whatever you want. The fabric will need to be home decor weight, which is normally medium weight fabric, although if you want heavy curtains you can use heavy or even upholstery weight material. Another thing to bear in mind is that if you're new to sewing or curtain making, it would be easier to pick a plain coloured fabric. Or, if you do want to pick a pattern, you pick something that has a small repeat. The result of this will be that if you accidentally sew the curtains a little bit wonky, or the pattern doesn't quite line up, then it's not as obvious. The other fabric you're going to need is lining fabric. I'm using medium weight lining. If you want to block out all light, then you will need to use blackout curtain lining. You'll also need some non-woven drapery tape, either three or four inches wide. I think drapery tape is the name used in America because I couldn't find it in the UK. What I ended up using was a product called non-woven interlining tape and I bought that in a medium weight. I couldn't find tape that was three inches wide so I ended up buying tape that was four inches wide instead. But that worked perfectly well. What you will also need is curtain rings with eyelets and also curtain hooks. I believe I ended up using in total 16 curtain rings and 16 curtain hooks. The hooks I used are referred to as metal pin hooks. In addition, you're also going to need a ruler and tape measure, some sewing pins, some fabric scissors, an iron and ironing board, a fabric pen, an awl for making holes in the fabric, and a sewing machine with thread that matches the curtain fabric you're using. Other things that could come in handy include a rotary cutter and cutting mat, a magnetic seam guide, a hand sewing needle, and a seam gauge. But don't worry if you haven't got any of those additional things because they're all optional. Right, so the very first thing we need to do is make some calculations to work out how much fabric you need. So we first need to measure the area that you want to cover with the curtains. Here's a picture of the window I wanted to cover and the width measurement I took was between the wall brackets that hold the curtain pole onto the wall. That measurement is how much wall and window, width-wise, I want to cover with the curtains. In my example, that's 63 inches. I then take a length measurement. And this measurement is how long you want your finished curtains to be. I measured from the bottom of the curtain pole down to about one inch above the radiator, because that's where I wanted my curtain to sit. In my case, that measurement was 56 inches. We don't have to do a calculation with the length measurement yet, but we are going to do one with the width measurement. So, the first thing we're going to do is times that width measurement by either 1.5, 2 or 2.5. This number will determine how much of a wave you will get in your finished curtains. My finished curtains had a soft wave to them, whereas if you use 2.5 in this calculation, they will have quite a dramatic wave. It's completely up to you. So you times your width by 1.5, 2 or 2.5. In my case, this gives me 94.5 inches. This represents the total finished width of the curtains. If you want to make more than one curtain panel, which I assume you do, you then divide that measurement by how many curtain panels you want. 
which is usually 2. So 94.5 inches divided by 2 is 47.25 inches. This represents how wide each of the finished curtain panels will be. I then rounded that number up just to keep it simple. So each finished curtain panel will be 48 inches by 56 inches. And now we have to work out how much fabric we need to make curtains that big. This might seem like a lot of calculations to do, but please don't be put off. You only need to spend 10 or 15 minutes doing these calculations. And once you know them, it's plain sailing from there, I promise. Okay, so we take the width measurement we've just worked out, which represents the finished width of a curtain panel. And then we simply add four inches to that amount. So in my case, that's 48 plus four, which equals 52 inches wide. You then take your length measurement and add 14 inches. In my case, that's 56 plus 14, which is 70 inches. So to make each curtain panel, I'm going to need a piece of fabric that's 52 inches wide and 70 inches long. So now I know how much fabric I need to buy to make the curtains. Because you're probably making two curtain panels, remember that you're going to need two pieces of fabric this big. And now we work out how much lining fabric we're going to need to make the curtains. So we take the width measurement we just worked out, which in my case is 52 inches, and we minus two inches from that amount, which gives me 50 inches. And then you take the length measurement you just worked out, which in my case was 70 inches, and you minus three inches from that amount, which in my case gives me 67 inches. So I'm going to need two pieces of lining fabric, one per curtain panel, that measures 50 inches wide and 67 inches long. And that tells me how much lining fabric I need to buy. So all in all, I require about four yards of both the curtain fabric and the lining fabric. And finally, we need to work out how much drapery tape we need. To do this, you simply take the lining width measurement, which in my case is 50 inches, and minus one inch from that amount. So for example, 50 inches minus one inch is 49 inches. Okay, so now we've worked out how big each fabric piece needs to be, we can cut them out. So in my example, I cut the curtain fabric into two panels, each measuring 52 inches wide and 70 inches long. Depending on the fabric you're using and what kind of pattern is on the fabric, make sure that the two panels look nice together. So the pattern lines up and each panel is symmetrical. Make sure they're both cut straight and not wonky and also make sure that the pattern is vertical when the curtain fabric is vertical. So in other words, make sure that the pattern is the right way up. I used a rotary cutter alongside a metal meter long ruler and a cutting mat to cut out all of my pieces. It can be a bit awkward to cut because it's so big, but if you're having trouble, try and follow the grain of your fabric to make sure that everything is at right angles. And if it's easier for you, you can mark out the outline of the pieces onto the fabric using a fabric pen and a ruler to start with. This way you can recheck the measurements and make sure that the outline is completely correct before you then cut along the lines and cut the fabric out. Then I need two panels of the lining fabric, each 50 inches wide and 67 inches long. And then I need my drapery or interlining tape, which in my case is four inches wide and 49 inches long. Always remember the saying, measure twice, cut once. You don't want to be making a mistake when cutting such a large piece of fabric. As always with sewing projects, it's pretty much 90% preparation and 10% actual sewing. So make sure that you get the preparation correct and the sewing part will be a breeze. Okay, so now you've cut out all the fabric pieces. We're going to hem each piece at the bottom of the fabric. So make sure you know which side is the top and which side is the bottom of each fabric piece 
and then you're going to fold over three and a half inches of the bottom of the fabric. In my diagrams, I'm showing the front of the curtain fabric as the polka dot pattern and the back as the plain gray. So as you can see, you fold the three and a half inches of fabric onto the back of the fabric piece. You then use an iron to press that fold in place. You then do the same thing, but with four inches of fabric this time. So you fold up four inches of the fabric and press in place. So now we have two folds that are pressed. The first one is at three and a half inches up from the bottom of the fabric. And then the next is four inches above that. So all in all, you have a seven and a half inch double fold hem. We now need to stitch this hem in place. So use your sewing pins to keep the fabric in position and then take it over to your sewing machine. You want to sew close to the first fold line you made, i.e. the top of the hem. You want to use a straight stitch and back tack at the beginning and the end of the line. Because I'm using a medium weight fabric and I wanted to keep the stitches strong, I used a 2.5 millimeter stitch length. The thicker the material you're using, the longer the stitch length you'll probably want to use. Make sure you always take the sewing pins out as you sew so that you don't sew over the pins. And when you've finished, you should have something that looks like this. You then need to do exactly the same for the other curtain panel and the two lining panels. The next step is to pair up a curtain panel with a lining panel. So in my case, because I'm doing two curtain panels in total, I'm going to make two pairs. So I simply take one of the curtain fabric panels and place it so the front side is facing upwards. Make sure the hem is at the bottom. Then you need to take a panel of lining fabric and put it on top of that curtain fabric panel, making sure that the lining fabric is front side down. So basically the front sides of both panels are together. The hems should be sitting about three inches apart. Once you've put a panel of lining on top of a panel of curtain fabric, then you need to line up the top edges. You also need to line up one side of the lining with the matching side of the curtain fabric. You then need to use sewing pins to attach the two pieces of fabric together all down that side edge. You then need to use a straight stitch to sew all down that edge from the top edge to the bottom of the lining. You need to use a seam allowance of half an inch. Be sure to use a magnetic seam guide or the marks on the plate of your sewing machine to help you make that consistent half an inch seam. You then need to press open the seam allowance using an iron. So take the fabric over to an ironing board, take the fabric edges next to where you just sewed and separate them. You then need to press these flat with an iron all along the seam. You need to press the seam from the right side of the fabric as well as the reverse side. Pressing seams like this just gives a neater, more professional finish. You then need to lay your fabric out again on a flat surface and then lift up the lining and move it across the curtain fabric so that the unsewn side of the lining fabric lines up with the unsewn side of the curtain fabric. Because the panel of lining fabric is narrower than the panel of curtain fabric, the effect of this is to pull the seam that you just sewed across the curtain fabric. So don't worry that that happens, that's supposed to happen. And then all you do is repeat what you just did by pinning that side edge together and sewing from the top to the bottom of the hem of the lining. Again, use a straight stitch and a half an inch seam allowance. Then, as before, you press that seam open all the way along. And you also press the seam from the right side of the fabrics too. Sewing both sides of the curtain panel like this will give you a tube or a cylinder of fabric. 
and now it's time to turn that cylinder inside out. You then need to press this cylinder of fabric along the side edges, making sure that it's completely symmetrical, i.e. you need to make sure that the same width of curtain fabric is showing on the right hand side edge as it is on the left hand side edge. You should have around an inch or an inch and a half of curtain fabric showing on each side of the reverse of the panel. You need to make sure that the top edges are aligned and then you need to add sewing pins all across that top edge. You then need to take the panel to your sewing machine and sew all across that top edge using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Make sure that when you're sewing this line, you sew right from one side to the other, including over the seams you've previously sewn. You then need to fold down the top edge of the curtain panel by half an inch and press with an iron. You then need to fold it down again an additional six inches and press. So all in all, you're folding six and a half inches of fabric down over the panel. You then unfold just that last fold. You then take your drapery tape and center it on the lining, making sure that the bottom edge of the drapery tape aligns with the crease line you last made. Make sure the drapery tape is in the middle of your lining and then add sewing pins along both the top and bottom edge of the drapery tape. You then need to edge stitch along the top and bottom of the tape. To do this I stitched close to the edge, about an eighth of an inch away, using a straight stitch. Make sure to stitch through all the layers of the fabric. You then need to refold the fabric along the crease line you made previously. So basically now you're enclosing that drapery tape in the top hem. You then need to sew this hem in place. There are two ways of doing this. You can either keep the panel as it is, i.e. front side downwards, before adding sewing pins and sewing along the edge of that hem. Or you could do what I did, which was to turn the curtain panel over so the front side was facing up, and then pin the hem in place from the front side of the curtain instead. This is slightly more difficult because you can't see the hem from the front, so you have to keep looking at the back of the panel to make sure that the pins are in the right place. I then took the panel to my sewing machine and top stitched straight across the panel, removing the pins as I went. The pins indicate where the hem is on the back of the panel, so after I've finished, the hem is now firmly secured. The reason it's better, in my opinion, to stitch this line from the front of the curtain is so that you can see exactly where that line is going to end up. And this makes it a bit easier to keep it consistent and neat. After all, this stitch line is going to be visible from the front of the curtains. And that is the last bit of sewing we need to do on this curtain panel. The next step is to place the pin hooks in the top of the curtain. To do this, we first need to decide where they're going to be positioned. I would suggest placing the pin hooks around seven inches apart and make sure the first and last hook are only about half an inch from the side edges. I believe I used about eight hooks per curtain panel. So simply evenly space the hooks along the top of the curtain making sure that the pointed end of the hooks points upwards. The top of the arch of the hooks represents where you want the curtain ring eyelet to sit. So by placing the arch of the hook, or the apex of the hook, slightly below the top edge of the curtain, I managed to hide the eyelet of the curtain ring, but not the curtain ring itself. It's completely up to you how many hooks you use and where you put them in relation to the top edge of the curtain. Once you've decided, take an awl and make a hole in the fabric at the base of where each of the hooks is sitting. I've shown the holes I made as red dots in this diagram. You might want to use a fabric pen 
to mark where you want these holes to go, just to make it a bit easier for you. Make sure that when you make each hole, you only take the awl through the top piece of curtain fabric and the drapery tape. Make sure you don't push the awl all of the way through to the front of the curtain because then you'll end up with holes in the front of your curtains. Once you've made those holes, you simply slip the hooks, pointed end first, into those holes. You can then hand sew the bottom few inches of side hem using a whip stitch to attach it to the bottom hem of the curtain. And that's it, that's your curtain panel finished. So you take the other lining and curtain fabric pieces, pair them up and do the whole thing again to make another curtain panel. I think once you have finished one panel, the second one becomes a lot easier to do. And at the end, you have a pair of curtains you can be proud of. I really hope you found this tutorial useful and thank you very much for watching.